transmitting from a big antenna in a really big field. It's Backstage Live with Joe Scheibinger. This is Alan Osmond of the Osmonds. You're listening to Backstage Live with Joe Scheibinger on News Talk 1450 KFIZ. And now, more Backstage Live with Joe Scheibinger. Music, interviews, fun and games. It's Backstage Live. Once again, here's Joe. And good morning, everyone. KFIC News Time 1013. This is the second hour of Backstage Live on this beautiful Wednesday, November 27th. Sit back and relax. We've got some great music coming from the wonderful, fantastic Patty Page. Introduced her to my loved one And while they were dancing My friend stole my sweetheart from me I remember the night And the tears he was Now I know just how much I have lost Yes, I lost my little darling The night they were playing The beautiful Tennessee Waltz Yes, I lost my Little darling, the night they were playing, the beautiful Tennessee. Like that, folks, huh? Isn't that unbelievable? Boy, oh boy, oh boy. Seven decades recording career, folks. Patty Page sold approximately 100 million plus records, making her one of the biggest, if not the biggest, selling female recording artist in history. 15 verified gold records and the recording of the Tennessee Walls at 10 million copies sold remains the biggest selling single ever recorded by female artists. She was charted at a staggering 111 hits on pop country and R&B list. Tennessee Walls was number one concurrently on all three charts, a feat no other artist in recording history can claim, and she's the unrecognized until now pioneer in the world of overdubbing of multiple voice techniques. It's unbelievable, absolutely unbelievable. Ladies and gentlemen, it is my pleasure and honor to give you on back, live here on Backstage Live, Patty Page. Miss Page, are good morning to you. How are you? I'm just fantastic. How are you? I'm pretty good. We're a little warmer out here in California than you are there. Yeah, you know, you guys, we, when we interview California people, they listen to the weather, and then they always say, boy, you know, how can you... No. <laughs> so tell us, we how have warm to have is something it? something to brag about. <laughs> <laughs> how warm is it by you? Well, it's about 60-some uh, here now. Oh, well, that's not bad. But, it, you know, it's still 8 o'clock in the morning, so... It's 26 here, but you know us, Wisconsin, I still wear short sleeve shirts. I'm wearing one right now. So. Well, I bet you do. <laughs> <laughs> what an amazing career, and it all started at a radio station. That's Isn't right. that something? Isn't that something? In Tulsa, Oklahoma, yeah. Let's go all the way back to Tulsa. Back okay. In, and this was in the late 40s, I believe. Yes, it was. And I can't remember the name of the, of the radio station. What was it? Was it was KTUL. KTUL. It was a CBS affiliate. I uh, went there for an interview for their traffic department. So that I could get a job for the summer. But, Tra traffic uh, meaning billing. Yeah. Well, no, traffic at that time meant uh, scheduling. Actually. Scheduling, right. Yeah. yeah. And so um, it was just putting numbers down and times. And so um, I was recognized by the program director. Uh, he had heard and seen me in an assembly at my high school. 
and he had heard me sing, and he said, are you here for an audition? And I said, no. And he said, well, I heard you sing. Why don't you, <laughs> you know, why don't you do that? And after you finish this particular uh, job, you know, the, the application, and he said, we have a studio. We have a studio musician, et cetera, et cetera, which is what I did. I went down to their 21st floor and um, put something on them and acetate. I don't really know what they were using in those days. Isn't that something? To record. But um, I did that, and about a month later, they called me from the studio instead of at the, at the traffic department and offered me a job. Is that something? You know, it was so exciting back then because they really had real live musicians in the radio station. Oh, they did. They weren't. They, they didn't have satellite automation and, and uh, no. TV po- or political talk shows and things of that sort. They had real live orchestras and bands set up. Oh, yes, they did. And, and people and audiences, you know, that came in to see it. Isn't yeah, that you know. Musicians would put an eight-hour day in playing their instrument at a radio station. That's right. And then go out at night and play all night. <laughs> <laughs> Boy, those must have been the days. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But, but, but you know, it's, it, it's all live, though. You were singing live on the radio. That's right. And even when television started, it was all live, the things that I did. Uh, the, um, I think it started in 1959, Kate. Mm-hmm. So it was quite a long time after that. Then you had a, a hit in 1948 called Confess. Right. Did, did that come from your radio station gig? No, that came from um, Chicago, and it was a disc jockey who wrote, the song on the other side is why I, I did that one. It was 12 o'clock high, it was called. Uh-huh. Uh, and Eddie Hubbard, I don't know, he was a pretty famous disc jockey. He became pretty famous later. But um, it came from a recording date, one of my first, in fact, and at Mercury. And uh, it was the innovative part was that it, I put two voices on the uh, record. Mm-hmm. No one else had ever done that. And so that's how it... It was not a big hit for me, by the way. Mm-hmm. It was a hit with the disc jockeys because of the gimmick. And so when other records followed, which I'm happy they did, the disc jockeys knew the name because of that gimmick. So you'll be going down in history as being the first multi-tracker. Well, supposedly, I mean, I think uh, they've given all of the attention to Les Paul because of his uh, his fabulous talent with mm-hmm. the uh, guitar and recording all those by himself. And then later, it was Mer- uh, his wife, Mary, that recorded with him. But that mm-hmm. was a year after mine came out. Isn't that something? Were, yeah. you dis- were you discovered at the radio station by a big name? Or how did you, how did you uh, get to go from Tulsa to Chicago? Well, I was discovered, but he wasn't a big name. He was just a road manager for a territory band <laughs> through the Midwest. They were passing through and doing a one-nighter in Tulsa. They turned on the radio in their hotel room, and my show happened to be on the air. It came on at... 3.15 every afternoon. It happened to be probably part of the time left on the radio station, so he didn't have to put any money in it. <laughs> My goodness. At that time, he had put money in the radios when you checked in the hotel. From a small radio station in Tulsa to live at the Carnegie Hall, 50th anniversary to 100 million albums. It's, yeah, that's what a long a, way, isn't it? What an incredible journey you've had. You also, uh, seeing that we're talking about records, you hold the record for having TV shows on all three of the networks. Yes, Three consecutive years. (laughs) I I don't know if that's good or bad. I don't know whether it's good or bad either. (laughs) One network didn't want me, so the next one took me. You know, one of those things, I guess. Yeah. But uh, it was it was quite an experience for me. In fact, the the one that I remember most is the big record on uh, on CBS television. Um, It was their first color variety show, and it was uh, it was quite a show. I, I had so many guests. I can't tell you how many and you know, the things that I had never dreamed of even meeting some of these people. Hmm. But it was a marvelous, uh, I thought, very innovative show, in fact. With, and it was it meant that they had a big record, and that's why they were on the show. Where did Patty Page, the name, come from? That came from the radio station in Tulsa. Really? Because I took over a show that was called Meet Patty Page, and it was sponsored by the Page Milk Company. And that's how I got the name. And so Patty when I Page. left there... After I had graduated, and a year after, almost, uh, I asked them if I could take the name with me. And they checked with the Page Milk Company, which is, by the way, out of Merrill, Wisconsin. No kidding! Yeah, uh-huh. A Wisconsin connection here. Yes, that was their home base. And um, uh, they said, no, we won't have another Patty Page after you. So I took Fantastic. the name, and I've been very proud of it since. Fantastic. Tennessee Waltz, your signature song. Mm-hmm. Um, when did you record that first? 
That was done in uh, November of 1950, or it was released in November of 1950. That's one of those songs that every band in the world that goes out and plays dances, it's, it, that is, and I'm a musician, Howie Schneider's live in the studio here with us, and he's got the Jan Garber Orchestra, he's listening in. Oh. And, and, isn't that right, Howie? Every, yes. every right. dance you play, every dance, Somebody comes up and says, play Tennessee Waltz. Really? As- absolutely. Hi, Patty. Nice, uh, nice listening to your conversation with Joe. I never met you, but I was always inspired by your uh, singing talents, and uh, you've been quite an inspiration to a lot of singers. In fact, uh, we have in the studio here, too, a gal who I just hired for the Jan Garber Orchestra who was oh. also listening. So, uh, But that song is a great song. Mm-hmm. Thank you. That's very sweet. Thank you. Live in the studio here, Michelle Duvall with us. Hi also. there, Patty. Hi, Michelle. Nice to meet you. Thank you. Same to you. You've got to give Michelle some pointers. Uh, the, the, the pointer you have to give her is how do you how in the world can can Michelle sell 100 million albums? I mean that that's that is such an incredible number. I mean it's it's hard to fathom. Well, it's hard for me to fathom too. And, and now we're up to CDs and you know, the transition from radio to television. How did you make that transition? I made it by going to New York. Um, in fact, uh, I have a very good Wisconsin connection because the manager who heard me singing on the radio station was from Milwaukee and uh, that's his home his family is still there I think but uh, he was the one who heard me sing and he was my manager for 50 years from the, you know, we went from Chicago where he first uh, took me to uh, sing with this band and um, I was with them six weeks at the Martinique on the south side of Chicago mm-hmm. and then he and I signed a management artist contract and that's when he started uh, pounding the streets, you know, to the record companies. And there was a new one that had just started out based in Chicago, mm-hmm. which was Mercury Records. I was doing some sustaining shows there in um, Chicago at MAQ and also the CBS station. There was Cesar Petrillo and his orchestra. And uh, we thought, well, somebody had heard me in New York, at least, you know, if we were going to New York. Nobody had heard it at all. <laughs> when we finally got there, I auditioned for a number of TV shows because they were just really starting out. Uh, Name that tune and uh, a couple of other song shows that used singers. But they didn't want, um, they said they didn't want a stylist or something like that. So I didn't get any of those shows. But um, the TV came much later because my television show was 53, where I um, did the um, replacement for Perry Como one summer. And so CBS opted to have me do the alternate show on Tuesdays and Thursdays because Perry was on Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. Unbelievable. Patty, can you stay with us for just a minute? We'll, sure. We'll take a real short break. We'll come back. Patty Page is with okay. us, folks. And uh, we're going to talk about her brand new CD. Uh, the brand new CD, of course, the brand new Tennessee Waltz, it's called. Right. We've been playing that CD here on Backstage Live quite a bit. And the background singers in on that CD are, are people who admire her uh, so much. How about these names for backup singers? M- Emmy Lou Harris on a backup on the uh, brand new Tennessee Waltz. Kathy Matea, who was just on Backstage Live here a few weeks ago. Uh, also uh, singing back up on that. KFIZ News Time 1027. We'll be right back with more Backstage Live right after this. You're listening to the second hour of Backstage Live with Joe Scheibinger on News Talk 1450 KFIZ. The ASC certified technicians of Bob's 151 Transmission know that in today's competitive automotive repair field, you don't always get a second chance. Find Bob's 151 Transmission. They fix and rebuild your transmission right the first time. Every time. Bob's 151 Transmission's true professionalism is clear in every job they do. Bob's 151 Transmission have their own fully stocked in-house parts department for all types of transmissions. When you need transmission work done in your vehicle, take it to the tranny shop that people have trusted since 1971. Bob's 151 Transmission Center and Highway 151 South Fond du Lac. With the rates this low, there's never been a better time to stop in. That's right, John. Right now and through Thanksgiving, Main Street Auto Sales has slashed prices on a special group of late model, low mileage vehicles. And with used car rates at an all-time low, monthly payments are sure to fit your budget. Come on down to Main Street Auto Sales on the corner of Main and Iron and Fond du Lac for your next pre-owned car or truck. It's worth a try because we'll save you money. Main Street Auto Sales, Main and Iron, Fond du Lac. Happy holidays from your friends at Rare Elegance Limousine. Hi, I'm Phyllis Diller, and you're listening to Backstage Live 
on News Talk 1450, KFIC. <laughs> Isn't that fun? Thank you. Thank you. Each time I look at you, it's like the first time. Each time you're near me, the thrill is new. How are you? And there is nothing that I wouldn't do for the rare idea of the sight of you. Because the more I see you, the more I want you. Somehow this feeling just grows and grows with every sigh i become more mad about you thank you more lost without you Hello. and so it goes how are you can you imagine how much i love you the more i see you as years go by the only one for me can only be my arms won't free you thank you and my heart won't try i absolutely love that song she's one of the first to be awarded her own star on the hollywood walk of fame her name is also on the country music walk of fame in nashville she's received a prestigious pioneer award from the academy of country music and is a member of the Oklahoma Hall of Fame. One of the first females to be inducted into the Oklahoma Music Hall of Fame along with Merle Haggard and Woody Guthrie, now, uh, uh, now in 2002. She's been honored with a Living Legend Award from her Oklahoma Jazz Hall of Fame, and she will not retire. Thank God, folks. Retirement is not a word in her vocabulary. In addition to performing concerts throughout the country, she hosts her own radio show, The Patty Page Show, on the Music of Your Life radio network. Additionally, Patty, with her husband, Jerry, maintain a thriving business in New Hampshire, producing maple syrup and pancake mix packages. We're going to talk a little about that. It's my honor, ladies and gentlemen, to give you recording artist extraordinaire, Patty Page. Good morning, Patty. Thank you, Joe. Nice to talk to you again. So you're a, you're a maple syrup entrepreneur, huh? Well, I'm not really one, no. <laughs> <laughs> maple syrup and pancake mixes? Well, it all starts with P, you know. Pancake. Yeah, under the name of Patty Page Pure Maple Products. Right. <laughs> But uh, I do love maple syrup, and, uh, you know, most of us fat people do. Oh, I we love, love yeah. pancakes. And so what is pancakes without maple syrup? What's life like for, for Patty Page? Well, it's been pretty busy. Uh, my husband and I have um, a pretty busy lifestyle, uh, not only running the farm and the maple syrup business. I have started producing my own records. Uh, I don't have a big contract with one of the top... Uh, record companies. But you don't need that in this day and age. No, you don't really. Mm -hmm. um, most most of the artists are going to their own website and selling their own records that way or infomercials and whatever. Sure. And um, we have also, we're raising two grandchildren. So at our age, we're starting over again. <laughs> but they're now in the seven and nine and they've been with us for five years. So they were two and five when they first came to live with us. Well, congratulations. It's been fun. Congratulations. Thank you. I think it's been about a year now for the, your new album, Petty Page, at the New Tennessee Walls. Was uh -huh, it about a year? That's right. uh -huh. I can remember a year ago, the, all of a sudden this came in the mail. And I thought, oh, my goodness. And I, I popped it on the CD player, and I was floored. And we had a we had a Petty Page day last year on Backstage oh, Live. We did a two-hour show on you, and you didn't even know it. Oh, that's great. <laughs> well, that's great. Thank you. And the CD is, is uh, very, very good. We've got uh, your new one, Patty Page, Sweet Sounds of Christmas. Oh, right, yeah. And let's talk a little about that. In fact, one of our lucky uh, listeners is going to get a copy of that. Oh, how neat. Thank mm -hmm. you. We're, uh, I was thrilled when I uh, did record the uh, brand new Tennessee Walton in Nashville and started an association with uh, the young lady you mentioned before, her husband, John Vesner who was the producer that I met, along with Victoria Shaw. Mm -hmm. And they produced that album. And uh, we've started since then. This is our third album that we've done together, uh, The Sweet Sounds of Christmas. And in between was a, it's a, what I think a beautiful children's album called Child of Mine, but that'll be released next year. John and I have um, really a great rapport with each other, his talent and for producing, etc., and... Uh, his knowledge of the music business and the record business the way it is today. Mm -hmm. And so 
we feel very good working together, and it's been very good so far. Patty, I want to thank you so much for being on Backstage Live with us. God bless you, and I hope you sing thank for another you, 50 Joe. years. Thank you. Your music is marvelous, and what do you say we let one of our listeners in on one of your CDs? Okay. First call right now, 923-1450, East of the Mississippi, 1-888-900-1450, and pound 1450, and don't bother calling because every line in the house just plugged right up tight. <laughs> <laughs> don't you just love it when that happens? Yeah. Let's take a call, and you can actually say hi to Patty Page. Good morning. You're live on KFIZ. Good morning. Good morning. How you doing? I'm doing fine. And who have we got here? Donna. Donna, would you like to say hi to Patty Page? Sure. Hi, Donna. Hi, Patty. How are you? I am fine. Great. Nice music. Thank you. <laughs> Beautiful. That's Happy great. Happy holidays. Thank you. Happy holidays to you. Donna, what's your favorite radio station? KFIZ. She sang it. What are you going to get for singing it? Oh, gosh. Come on. Bagels from cool beans and bagels. That's right. Touched touch by the touch hand of the hand of God. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> Donna, oh. stay on the line, and we'll get your vitals. And uh, Patty, once again, I can't thank you enough for being on Backstage Live and and saying hi to our listeners here uh, in Wisconsin. You are very welcome. If you ever, if you ever come to Wisconsin to do a concert, please call us. Okay, I will, Joe. Thank <laughs> and you. Stay on the line with us just for a second. Okay. KFIZ News Thanks, Time Daddy. Nine. Okay, Donna. KFIZ News Time 1037. We've got lots more coming your way on Backstage Live, so make sure you stay tuned, folks. You're listening to the second hour of Backstage Live with Joe Scheibinger on News Talk 1450 KFIZ.